Well, I'm best known for StageGate in the business community, practitioner community. But in the academic community, I'm best known for the research that I've done on success factors, why new products succeed, why they fail. So we, we certainly have a very good idea of why a handful of companies seem to be out there at the front of the pack and then there's a whole gang of people in the middle and then a whole bunch of guys back here at the tail end having a heck of a hard time doing product development. And the factors are, are pretty well known. Probably the biggest thing that separates winners from losers is, is their ability to understand the marketplace, the unmet needs of the customer or user or consumer, and crafting a product that, that solves customer problems and, and, and really delivers a compelling value proposition, creates a wow factor when the customer sees it. Wow, this is fantastic, just what I wanted. And, and that comes from very, very hard work. Not, not subcontracting a research study to some market research department, but it means the project team getting out there, visiting customers, learning, you know, walking in their shoes, understanding their points of pain. And, that's, and the project teams that do that, that go to the trouble of doing that, and, and it is a lot of work, they usually come back some, with some major ahas, and they build them into their product, and wow, voila, you have a winner. And of course, the guys that don't do that, they get into trouble. So that's number one. Number two, I guess I'd have to say, is um, putting together an effective cross-functional team. I keep saying to people, um, new product development is a team sport. A typical team sport has players from many walks of life, you know, there's forwards and there's defense and, and, a, and a goalie and things like that. And everybody on that team has an equal stake in and commitment to win the game. There's a, a team captain who's out there on the field. Everybody looks to this individual uh, to sort of, you know, create some uh, entrepreneurial spirit and let's go win. So putting together a really effective cross-functional team consisting of of technical folks and marketing and sales and operations or production along with a, a really strongly empowered and impassioned uh, passionate uh, project leader that seems to be one of the keys to success you know you can move mountains if you got a dedicated committed passionate team that's trying to get something done and I've seen that again and again and, and, and I guess the third thing I'd say is there's an awful lot of people in a, in a heck of a hurry today. You know, they figure, they, they get an idea and they're al already into development. They've got the product three quarters developed and they, they think it's going to be a winner. One of the things I say to people again and again and again is the game is won or lost in the first five plays. In the time between where you get an idea and you're moving it into development, a heck of a lot of stuff has to happen in the so-called fuzzy front end of the project. Everything from a market analysis to a technical feasibility to a source of supply, it's tough work. And a lot of these guys don't want to do it, they just want to leap into development and try to score a goal. And you know what? They miss the net most of the time. So the three key things I'd say is a cross-functional team, empowered, uh, accountable, passionate, and with a good leader, the building in the voice of the customer, understanding customer points of pain, and doing the upfront homework. You know, getting, getting the facts before you charge down the field and try to score a goal. Well, I think one of the things I'm, I'm seeing, um, which is sort of interesting, is um, how influences from other worlds have started to affect the way we in the manufacturing world do product development. And one of them, of course, is this agile uh, methodology that has been developed uh, largely in Silicon Valley and adopted by software guys everywhere. And what we were finding um, is that a team would go out and uh, try to understand the customer's needs or wants. And no matter how much they watched or probed or asked, they couldn't get the answer. The new model seems to be uh, build something early, often, fast and cheap. Get it out there in front of the customer for feedback. Uh, make the, you know, get the learning, validate your assumptions or make the changes if you have to. Because people don't know what they're looking for until they see it. So get something out there. And, and, and what they're able to show. I mean, GE is 3D printing jet engines or components of jet engines using powdered metallurgy. Unbelievable. Um, 
there's a company that said we're in the food business and some of our customers are 3D printing cake. So in the more modern version of StageGate, we call it adaptive StageGate, there's a whole series of spirals or iterations where you build something, get it in front of the customer, test it, get feedback, revise your thinking and move on. And by the way, that's very consistent with what the folks in the software world are doing because agile development is very much like that too. But they came at it from a different perspective. I've just come from uh, Sweden and Denmark and also Germany in the last two weeks and I'm seeing uh, evidence of companies in those countries doing an unbelievable job of combining the best from this agile methodology with the best from uh, the way we do the gating process for manufactured products and they're calling it agile stage gating. So it's sort of neat what's happening.